Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear participants of Futurepreneurs Project. Or maybe you are not participants, you are Futurepreneurs. Are you? Yep, <laughs> for sure. So it's my pleasure today to hold a session for you on sustainability. Yulia, would you... Would you like to say anything? No? <laughs> no. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Laudrana Elia Shute, and it's rather sustainable name and surname. Everything is related to nature. Well, Lithuanians understand, and if you don't know Lithuanian, so I'm related to the weather, the storm. That's my name. And my surname, it's from the plant aloe vera. So I'm in the right place with right surname. But you'll see. If, if I'll fit to your minds, if I'll fit to your needs, if it will be useful for your projects. Um, I have background in geography. I graduated from Vilnius University a long time ago. And when I did studies in public administration, I did studies in environmental management. And for nearly 10 years, I'm working as a consultant for municipalities, for the government, for companies, on sustainability and uh, I would say that um, it's rather difficult task and I hope that in the nearest future we will have more sustainability workers we will have more people who know that sustainability it's not only theoretical definition but it's reality but let's see At the moment, I'm working in Baltic Environmental Forum. It's a non-governmental organization for nearly 15 years, working in the environmental field. And our motto is not like many other environmental NGOs say, we have to protect, we have to fight. We're not here to fight. We're here to collaborate, we're here together to love nature, to enjoy it, to understand what the nature is, and then together with nature to try to, to save it for future generations. Among number of activities we do, we do a lot of nature projects, uh, agriculture and rural development, protected areas. We also do a lot about chemicals. We also do a lot about sustainable business and actually there is one publication, recent publication, very, very fresh, still with the smell of the printing house, about chemicals in household. It's in Lithuanian, so Lithuanians, please take it if you, if you are interested in how to protect your health and how to protect your environment. But today I will not talk about chemicals, as you know. Today we'll talk about sustainability. Very, very quickly, ask your neighbor, what is your personal contribution to sustainability? What do you do about sustainability? Very quickly, talk to your neighbor, two minutes, and be ready to tell me, what's your personal contribution to sustainability? Yes, 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 yes. If you are free, talk free of you. You have one minute left. Okay, 
ready? Ready? Who wants to start? Or would you like me to ask you? Who, who will start? Yes. I, I heard you had a good idea. <laughs> I, but you talked about something really nice. Unfortunately. But still, what do you do about sustainability? Or comp cycling. Recycling. Thank you. Who else? What's your PS? Sustainable habit. Recycling. Who else? Thank you. Somebody else, quickly. Yes. Yes. So recycling and refusing of plastic, sustainable fashion. Something else, something new. What else? What else do you do? That's it? That's it what we do about sustainability? That's, that's all? I'm going every day to Vilnius from Kaunas by train. That's my contribution to sustainability. Very little, but I'm contributing. I'm saving fuel. I'm saving time, I guess because you have traffic jams. And I think with small changes, we may reach bigger changes, of course. But let's explore a little bit sustainability. So first of all, for you futurepreneurs, I cannot imagine any other business than sustainable business. And I would like today to discuss why. Why the change is needed and what's the difference between the business we had before so-called business as usual, because I think in, in many, many businesses we, we hear the magic word, profit, growth. And sustainability, is it about growth? Is it about profit? What do you think? Yes? It depends. It depends. I liked very much the answer who said it depends. It depends what kind of quality of life, it depends what kind of growth, it depends what kind of profit. Because if it's profit as usual, then we will have problems. At the moment, we're living in, in a really, really very important time. And many scientists who are exploring sustainability, they're saying that it's time to change now. Actually, I hear this word now for 20 years, but now we have to change. Now something should happen. But indeed, since 2002, scientists started talking not only about the pollution, not only about climate change, not only about recycling and uh, waste uh, we have, we are producing every day. Scientists started talking that we're making imprint in our planet geological structure. That means that if after one billion years somebody would be living here and would be watching at the rocks, they would find our imprint. And we never did it before. We never did it before. It's only 200 years we're making such a big change. Why? We are transferring, uh, we're transferring rocks three times more than rivers. We're using nuclear power. We're using a lot of concrete. And somebody of you probably have seen the documentary, well, it's not documentary, it's, uh, it's a movie. What would be on the earth if we would disappear, isn't it? It's very quickly. 
it's very quickly, but at the, mo at the moment, we are still prevailing with the activities that are really making impact on the nature. And scientists are saying that we are living not anymore in Holocene, this is geological era after the Ice Age, and we are living in Anthropocene. For the last 10 years, we are living in new geological era. And what does this global context bring to us? World Economic Forum every year produces the Global Risk Report for business. And they produce report not from the predictions, not from the scientific reviews, not from the articles. They ask business, what are you afraid of? What risks do you see? And then they draw the maps of the different, different risks. So in this age of Anthropocene, what we're experiencing, globalization, it's on one hand good, isn't it? Because you are futurepreneur, business might be operating, of course, not in Lithuania, not even only on the European level, it might operate globally. And that brings a lot, a lot of opportunities. It brings a lot of chances. But on the other hand, we're losing local traditions. We're losing a lot of local businesses for the huge corporations. So globalization brings good and bad things. Um, I used to work for one year in um, Saudi Arabia, and it's, it's a strange country, and really I thought I would never come back to that country because it was too strange for European. And I went to the shop, I wanted to buy something. And it was but like deja vu. I couldn't find anything what I've seen, something different what I've seen in Lithuania, except of the clothes. The goods in the store were the same. So we are becoming the unified world. We are moving a lot. Um, tourism is becoming a huge problem. Yes, we like to go to different countries. Yes, that's very nice. Yes, it's equal opportunities for everybody that we have cheap flights. But we are producing carbon footprint, huge carbon footprint. Demographic changes. What is happening in the world? The north is becoming older. The south is growing. And for business, it's a challenge because the customer will be different. In 2020, it's predicted that in the market will be, in the middle management, we will have about one billion women. What does it mean? Because in Asia, women is getting power also. Gender equality is coming to all countries. And what women will create, what kind of business we will have, I just hope that it will be sustainable because women think a little bit different about the world and about profit. Urbanization. Half of the world is living in the cities. Chance for business? Of course. Because you have huge amount, huge density of people living in, in one place. And you may provide a lot, a lot of services. But at the same time, you have increased pollution. We have traffic jams and so on and so on. Digitalization, environmental degradation, impacts of chemicals on health. Let me go back a little bit to the definition of sustainability. I don't know how many of you listened to the course on sustainable development and you know about the word. Um, in Lithuanian language, we have rather different uh, translations of this word. I started to work with sustainable uh, definition of sustainability in 1997 when we didn't have any translation. And in Lithuanian language, we, we translated it like it's balanced development, when you balance economic, social, and environmental goals. But on the other hand, it's not only balancing. The word itself, sustainability, it was, it's an official word. It was not in the English language. It appeared in some way in the 18th, 19th century, and it was commonly used in forestry. Because in the forest, it's very easy, it's, it's a good example how to understand sustainability. If you have a forest, you may very quickly cut everything and get a huge profit, isn't it? That's nice. That's business as usual. And you may 
easily spend it for something and you may easily lose everything. Well, maybe not, but 50-50. But if you really think about how to sustain your forest, if you want your children, hand, grandchildren to have also profit, what would you do? You would cut Matthew trees and then you plant another trees and you gradually, you cut the trees, but you still, you restore. So sustainable forestry was the first, uh, forestry actually, it was the first field where sustainability was used. In 1997, the world was uh, very frightened of environmental impact of business. And United Nations gathered scientists, politicians, uh, business people, and under the, under the, um, under the uh, head, this commission was headed by Norwegian Prime Minister Bro Harlem Brundtland, they wrote the report, Our Common Future, where they defined the sustainability definition. And they said that sustainability is satisfying of our needs, not compromising with the needs of our grandchildren. And they said, well, everything will be fine. Uh, in 1992, the world leaders in the um, World Summit, Rio de Janeiro, they published 500 pages book, Agenda 21 for the 21st century, how to save the world. It's a sustainability guidelines, how to behave for everybody. And again, everybody thought, well, it's nice, we have document, we will have sustainability. However, it's not that easy. In 1996, Three Danish scientists published a book, Our Stolen Future. Why stolen? <coughs> the chemists, scientists of, who explored the impact of chemicals on human body, they analyzed different chemicals, what we're using every day, and everybody says they are not dangerous. Everybody says that the amounts are too small to impact us. But the problem is that chemicals are accumulating in our body, and then they agglomerate, and then they imitate our endocrine system. And then what is happening, it's, the, it's personal. It depends on your body. And those three Danish scientists said that we will not have neither sustainable development, neither Agenda 21, we will not be able to reproduce as a species, as, as, a, as a human beings. So, those impacts at the moment, we have more and more signs something is happening, something, something is really bad happening. I will come back to the worst prognosis about the world. But Anthropocene is offering more challenges than solutions. And that's the problem, because whenever we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about problems, we're threatening each other, we're thinking that, okay, the world will end, and what me? simple person who is traveling from Konas to Vilnius, what can I do? My traveling, it's really nothing about impact on the earth crust. It's, it's nothing. And those questions people are asking themselves, but I think, I think each action is very important. Let's have a look at the top global risks, what uh, business uh, told to the World Economic Forum. So if in 2007, the most of the risks, risks named were economic, it was oil price shock, China economic um, hard landing, asset price collapse, uh, societal problems, technological problems. So in 2017, business named that the extra weather events, climate change related, major natural disaster, disasters, climate related, those two environmental issues appeared on the risk table. Yeah, who is pessimist, who is optimist? I'm, I'm struggling every time talking about sustainability and sometimes I'm getting the feedback that you again frighten the audience. Uh, once I was lecturing for a rather different audience, I had adults and I had the primary school children. And some primary school children started crying after my lecture. <laughs> and I really felt very bad. <laughs> but 
since that I, I've changed a lot in my presentations. I never frightened anymore. But I think we have to understand why. Because when somebody says, save the planet and brings you nice globe in hands or green leaves and says, save the planet. So you will say once, but you will not do it continuously. And as you said, we also, all the time, we have a feeling that we did something wrong, but what should they do? Can I do it alone? We, we have all those tensions. So I think if we would be informed enough about what is happening, what are my impacts, personal impacts, first of all, and then business impacts, because sometimes we as persons, as individuals, we may not impact business. And indeed, uh, today, if we are recycling, and if, recy if the collected, recycled, collected waste for recycling is not recycled proper, uh, properly, so it's not our fault. So it's basically, it's business fault. If business is producing clothes that last for one month or two months or three months. So it's, it's again, of course I may not choose those brands, but let's say if I'm a student and I cannot afford to buy expensive clothes, but I still have to, to wear something. So information, in my understanding, is very important. Is it new what I'm talking about? And um, did sustainability appear suddenly in the agenda of the world in um, 1987? Yes, it did. But before that, we should go a little bit to the history. And um, after Second World War, I will not talk before Second World War, because at that time we really had the industry was like something, uh, the industry was goodness. It was not something what polluted. We had occasionally some accidents, but in principle, development industry was a right thing to do. In 70s, in 60s, 70s, it was first time when we noticed that there is a side effect. The side effect in agriculture Rachel Carson published Silent Spring because birds disappeared because of the use of pesticides. And there were a lot of signs that something is wrong. In Rome, in 1968, there were about 30 businessmen, scientists, economists, and they started to elaborate models, mathematical models of the future. In 72, well, nearly 40 years ago, they published a book, Limit, The Limits of Growth, where they looked at the resources, and they understood, yes, they are declining. The pollution, it's increasing. The population, it's still increasing. Industrial output, it's going up. And the food, it's also, at the same time, the food production is growing. And they, model, they made a model with those variables. In 1972, they said, well, if we will continue like this, like business as usual, it's 100 years left. Oh, well, not very pleasant prediction. However, uh, the, the Club of Rome is still alive, and unfortunately, Lufini is not a member of the Club of Rome. You may, become you may have individual membership, and countries have membership, and they still gather every year. They published about 50 books, since 72, about sustainability, about prognosis, about, it's basically everything is about business and business impacts. And the latest book, come on, the Club of Rome, they say that, well, we talk too much. We have to go not for new, not only, I would say, for new technologies, not only for new legislation, because in the audience, I sometimes I hear the reply like, why something is bad? Let's make a very strong legislation, and then business will do everything in the right way. Do you think it's the right thing to do? Let's have stronger legislation. Who would vote for that? Nobody. Why not? Too much rules. <laughs> Too much rules, and then I have another argument for that. Because now we will we'll have to pay for supervision of the legislation because enforcement is the most difficult thing. And that creates more problems. So now 
Lobo Fromm talks about inspiration. It's, he talks about new traditions, but taking into account old traditions. But Club of Rome, it's not the only one who is predicting the future. In 2014, not very long ago, Melbourne Sustainable Society Institute have uh, been uh, trying to prove that Club of Rome is wrong. We are not going like it was predicted. It's better. So the, the hard line, it's reality. The punctuation, it's... Uh, it's, it's the prediction. So with pollution, we're doing a little bit better than it was predicted, but resources are used in the same way. The production economy, it's more or less as predicted. Only services per capita, it's growing. The population is growing as predicted. So Club, is Club of Rome was right. And basically, if nothing will change, we have clear sign. There is mathematical model that the end of the world, it's not something from the space, it's not a war, but it's crisis. Multiplied crisis. Every junction of the lines, from the previous slide, Every junction, it's a crisis. Every junction, it's something. It's political crisis. It's food crisis. It's climate crisis. It's pollution crisis. And unfortunately, now we have also clear signs that those political, the political crises are very much connected to sustainability. For instance, Syria drought. It took nearly four. It was four very dry years, and that led to the civil war. It's interesting that the first environmental legislation was born also in Mesopotamia, in, in the same region where Syria is situated now. Um, the Tsar Hammurabi, he published the, the, the code, the first legislation on water. And despite the legislation, this nation disappeared. So this is also an example that sustainability becoming a threat. One of the recipes how to save the world in the Club of Rome book, Our Limits of Growth, they said that we have to control population, but nobody uh, to, to do that except of some countries. So now we have nearly 7.6 billion citizens on the earth. And due to the globalization, we have the same needs, that's obvious. And how to satisfy those needs, how to be with the cities, how to be with the people who are in need, how to be with inequity. For a long, long time, we never thought about business in north and business in south. And basically, business in north flourished and got profits only because the South was exploded. We not only took the labor force in the early ages from the South Hemisphere, but we also put a lot of waste in that part. And we still are using the cheap labor force. But in our days, I guess everybody in this audience believes that this is not where you could, on what you can count in your business. We are forgetting one more very important thing when uh, we, we are not taking into account the impacts of business on environment. Um, we consider that if some, some I know, bird or insect will disappear, so what's, for, what's the problem? The problem is that we are forgetting that we are living in ecosystem. And still we don't understand ecosystems. We don't know how ecosystem in the earth is operating. And if we take something, you remember probably in your first classes in, in the school, there was a cycle when the bird is eating something and then the something eats something and, and, and it, it goes round. And unfortunately we are not repeating, that knowledge is not repeated in the, in the further education because we don't understand that the earth is producing for us air, what we breathe. 
And if something bad happens, yes, we do have technologies. Because one of the versions, whenever people are arguing that sustainability is just a nice philosophy and we should do nothing, because we have new technologies, new innovations. But I can tell you a simple, a simple example. We'll, we all are enjoying those nice things. And we have this because of what's in here. Mm -hmm. it's, no, no, but the, the smart screen, it's made from? From? No, this is not glass. This glass is made from what? Liquid crystals. From what liquid crystals? It's a nano form of carbon. It's nano materials. That we have this, this kind of possibility to use phones. And there are some, some uh, there is not enough research to prohibit there is not enough research to prove, but there is research that nanocarbon, the carbon in nano level, it acts as asbestos. Asbestos, we used to have on the roof, we, we cover the roof, and we are changing it now. We know that it's dangerous. Uh, another example. Probably everybody have refrigerator with... Uh, antibacterial cover. Now it's very common. Well, most of people have. Because it's, it's, it's nice. And the effect of the silver in nano form, which is used for this antibacterial feature, the effect of it, it's also like heavy metals. That heavy metals are bad, we know. But again, we still don't have research enough today to say that it's something bad. Uh, Why well, I'm telling that? Because in the 50s, when the world discovered pesticides, it was innovation. It was something what we used to increase the harvest and to feed the people. And we had in mind that it's very good innovation. So now innovations, you, the businesses you are creating, we have to foresee a lot because we cannot repeat the same mistakes we did before and we have to be precautious. European policy is based on the principles of polluted pace. You have to minimize waste where it appears. You have to use prevention principle and precautionary principle. To be precautious, it means if there is no 100% proof that something is really not dangerous for environment and human health. So you have not to do that. Because nature knows best. Because nature provides us with number of services and innovations may really restore some services the nature provides for us. But is it worth? For instance, now we have prototypes, machi the machines, who are taking CO2 from the atmosphere and they're producing fuel. We have it, but it's expensive. So why to pollute something and then to invent something to clean it? Why not to think about impacts of your activities to foresee what's happening and not to repeat the mistakes? There is one uh, measurement, there is one indicator where business, countries, cities, and sometimes uh, even individuals can measure the impact on the earth. It's ecological footprint. If you want, you can check. There is ecological footprint calculators, number of calculators. Check the websites. Check your footprint. And the definition of a footprint, would, uh, it's a scientific indicator, aggregated, complicated ag uh, indicator. Um, but it's about... Let's imagine that you put Vilnius on the do. How much of territory would be needed to satisfy the needs of us, like contemporary needs, not the basic needs, but to have phones, to have uh, everything we are using, and how much of territory will, would be needed to, 
to accumulate, uh, to accumulate the waste we're producing. So would you think the Vilnius territory would be enough? The geographical territory? Definitely not. Uh, I've calculated my carbon footprint, uh, my uh, ecological footprint. Uh, and if everybody on the earth would live like me, we would need three earths. <laughs> and they know why. Because when you calculate, you understand where. Because I'm flying a lot. <laughs> and what that is good with, um, with ecological footprint is that countries may really understand from where the impact on nature comes. Or businesses are doing ecological footprint also knowing, in order to know from where the biggest impact. But this is just one of the indicators for businesses. Uh, the Footprint Network have calculated and they say that indeed if everybody on the earth would live like United, like the citizen of United States, we would need five planets. If everybody would live like European three planets, and if everybody would live like person from Bangladesh, we would need Bangladesh. Bangladesh. One what only. Um, do you agree? If we would go to Bangladesh, we would, 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 be the, would it be the same? One quarter? I guess no, because our needs are higher. We would need air conditioning and so on and so on. And this is also the picture uh, from the city of Dzerzhinsky. Uh, it's in Russia. And we still have places on the earth where the life expectancy where life where the life expectancy of people is 40 years. So it's also sustainability, it's not only about environment, but it's also about the equality. It's about impact on people in different regions. So if if you are importing, let's say, something from the city produced in such conditions. So can you count that your business is sustainable? Not. But how to know that? How to learn about that? That's a huge challenge for business now. IT, technologies. Again, World Economic Forum calculated what happens in the internet in one minute. And what does it mean for sustainability? On the one hand, it's transparency, because suddenly when something happens, we know. We know something happened. We know that um, Lithuanian fertilized company is buying the raw material from the country, from the dictatorship country, and people are not getting wage, they are working like slaves. And another fertilizer company in Lithuania, they are buying more expensive raw material. We know about that. And it changes some people's mind, but not everybody's. At the same time, I guess the openness, it creates a lot of opportunities to cheat. It, a lot, it creates a lot of opportunities to, to steal. And that's why we have a lot of legislation now, more and more legislation about the uh, security. But we also have new technologies, blockchain technologies, where, again, the IT created exactly opposite thing to fears. Because in these cases, we have opportunity that information is not held in one hand, and we should have some possibility to prevent those problems. But that, again, depends on the honesty of the participants. And just to imagine about Anthropocene, four and 4.6 billion years ago, something happened in the planet period. In the solar system, we're living here. So we're destroying everything what was created during half a billion years, fossil fuel, it's oil, gas, coal. And we don't know what will future generations need. We don't know what imprint we will leave and what kind of geology we will create. Sustainability is becoming buzzword. <laughs> I guess everybody heard it in lectures, in, in uh, 
in, in media. Yep. But if you would be asked, what does it mean? Would you be able to define it? Clearly. Well, you are starting your businesses. How would you define what does it mean sustainability for your business? Recycling only? Or something else? Or do you put equal, like, sustainability It's something good for environment? Trying to offer the, the hmm? for environment to be as minimal as Yeah, I guess it's very difficult because we have 100, more than 100, probably 150 definitions of sustainability. And businesses confused, confused a lot with... Uh, a triple bottom line uh, agenda 21 it was sometime very very popular a life supporting capacity life cycle analysis we have number of different words what business should use for sustainability but in principle everything is about change we have to change something and the change management is the most difficult in companies I've listened to some presentations you've um, in the previous uh, Futurepreneurs. I've listened to some presentations in general for startups in Lithuania. And many, many presenters are saying that you have to start your business, you have to grow your business, you have to do everything because if you have money, you may buy time, you may buy happiness, and you may be. The, the richer you will be, the happier you will be, start your business, earn money. But nobody warns what kind of business you start. Till now we had number of businesses and we still have number of businesses who are producing harm for us. And we never think about it because it's so commonly accepted, it's so commonly used. Uh, we have very narrow sustainability window, says Timothy Jackson, the sustainability economist. Only because of natural resource demand and resource supply. Now we have chance. You have a chance. You have a chance to build a business that will be different. That will be completely different from the business before. And you will be forced, even if you will not like to do business like this, you will be forced to do that. Because this picture of sustainability, I would say, is not valid anymore. We, we draw sustainability like three separate spheres, environment, social, and economic, and we say that we have somehow to compromise. We have to, to do something so that we would not disbalance environment, we would not disbalance ecological services. But I would say that we have to understand clearly that economy and society is a part of environment. Imagine economy without society and environment. Can you imagine it? No. Can you imagine environment without society and economy? Easily. It was for a long time. So I think this is my main message for future printers. Remember this. Forget, forget all the lecture. It's not important. But on the other hand, if sustainability is everything, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just a buzzword. Maybe we should not do anything about it. Alan Atkinson, the consultant, business consultant from Sweden, he was giving a huge uh, presentation in uh, 2016 for businesses, for nearly 200 businesses in the Lithuanian presidential palace. He says that we have to have a compass. And the compass should be to all four directions. Business cannot go only for economy because now, nowadays it's not 
it's not possible. It cannot go only for nature, it cannot go only for society, and no, not only for well-being, because this we had already. Business should go for all of those four dimensions. We in Lithuania, well, let me, let me, let me stay here. What do we have sustainability strategy? Who is taking care of this issue? You are starting businesses, isn't it? And who is leading sustainability in Lithuania? Who gives guidance for the whole country? Who is saying how it's going on? Finally, who reports to United Nations? Which ministry do you think is in charge of sustainability? Nobody knows. Well, guess. What would you think? Because it's complex, it's interconnected issue. And it relates to society, to business, to education, to health. What ministry is in charge? Or environmental ministry. Oh. One of those. Right, environmental ministry. What's interesting, foreign ministry is responsible for sustainable development goals, SDG 17. For sustainable business is responsible, for responsible business, the ministry responsible is environmental, another guess, social and labor ministry. Surprise, surprise. We have national sustainable development strategy, and it's also, it has a lot of prescriptions for business. You have a look at it when you'll be developing businesses. They have goals, they have some long-term goals, short-term goals, and I think it's, it's good to look at it. Because whenever you are developing business in any field, look at the white papers, at green papers, and national documents, because that's necessary. You will see the future of your business, the impacts on your business, the regulation of what is expected. But in Lithuania, we do not have clear guidance for sustainability. And let's say, let's say if I'm starting business and I'm coming to the Ministry of Environment and saying, like, can you explain me? Can you tell me? What are you doing? Can you, can you help me? Do you have any consultancy? You would not get that. On the opposite, in Finland, there is the think tank under the government, Citra, and they have a number of interesting documents also, if you will be, if it's related to your business, think about uh, uh, visiting that site. And Finnish Council for Sustainable Development, they have just three slides for everybody who is asking, is sustainability important? They say yes, because we, sustainability is in crisis now. And if we will not think about simple things like global warming, those two degrees we're talking all the time, we will not need any business in the next 20, 30 years because we will have disasters everywhere. But we say also that every solution, we have lots of innovations, lots of solutions, but we need people to work. We need ethics and we need understanding. Also, they say that the chair economy, the huge economy is coming and we cannot predict anything. And your businesses will be operating in unpredictable society. You'll have to navigate with your values. And again, what is value for you? If you will understand that sustainability is just its economy and somewhere environmental and social things, then, yeah, we will have business as usual. Technologies are changing everything, they say, but again, the enabler is person. And people values, ethics are very important. Again, it's nothing new. And if somebody would ask me how to start sustainable business, I would take advice from 1971. Barry Commoner, one of the members of the Club of Rome, he designed the full laws of ecology. And he said, Everything is connected to everything else. If you change one part, you will change the whole system. 
think about it. If you'll be designing, if you'll be solving problem, environmental problem, think about impacts on different genders, different groups. Everything must go somewhere. This is about waste. Is there waste in the forest? Do we have waste in nature? Do we? No, in nature. Without nature, without humans, do we have waste? No. Waste is food. Waste is food. We forgot that. Nature knows best, that's for sure. But I most of all, I like this one. There is no such thing as free lunch. So we are paying. We're paying with health. We're paying with diseases. We're paying with polluted air. Um, polluted air. We're paying with lost scenery. We're paying with lost water and number of things. And of course, we know all that. But the question is how to make changes. One of the instruments that is used in, um, and it's very much popular in European Commission, not European Union, Commission, and they say that we should go for eco-design. 80% of the whole problems, plastic, unsustainable fashion, whatever, I don't know, 80% of the problems might be solved when we are designing things, if we would keep in mind the ecosystem. Now, when you are starting your businesses, when you'll be designing your businesses, it depends on you what your business impact will be. Only on you. But you have to, to think from the circ circular economy point of view. You have to think about raw materials. Does your material is doing harm for environment? Does it do harm for the people somewhere where, it's, where it comes from? Production. This part in Europe is quite okay. Packaging and transportation. We have new legislation, well, new, it's 10 years, new legislation on packaging, but it's still not in place in, 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 in Lithuania and we still have problems. Customer use. What's the effect of the products when it's used? Reuse and recycling. So services and products you'll be designing, they have to be in line with all that circle. You have to think about everything. The European Union says that in, that in 2020, if we will use eco-design principles in, um, in different fields, uh, it's um, basically they, all, on all, they are concentrating on electrical equipment. So they say that if eco-design principle would be applied, we may save about 12% of the energy use. So it's also about savings, about savings in industry, for industry, for users in industry of your electrical appliances, and of course for the customers. There is another um, topic talking about the um, sustainability in business, eco-efficiency. Club of Rome published one of, the, one of the books published by Club of Rome. It's factor four. It's how to produce the same thing with four times less materials and four times less energy. French scientists gone for factor 10 even. Is it happening? Eco-efficiency. Do we produce things with less materials? Demateri dematerialization, is it happening or not? Example? Well, I, I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're becoming less. I'm, I'm using one example from my life. So this I didn't have, but these are instruments for reproduction of music. And I had all these instruments. And now we have, we don't need any more. We dematerialized service. So think about when you'll be thinking about the solutions you you will be solving. Think about it. Maybe you don't need. Think about needs, not about the thing you have to produce. 
that what need you, you are satisfying. <coughs> Natural step, uh, we took the uh, loss of very common uh, the loss of ecology and uh, this organization, they are consultants of business and they are saying that those are four rules now because we were a little bit further than 71. 1971, and now we have to think about four, about four laws, three concerning nature that we cannot take more than it can be safe, safely contained or reabsorbed. We must not disturb a delicate balance of ecology. We have to respect nature, not to diminish the supporting systems, and it has to be equal for all people in the world because nature belongs to everybody. And it's very strange to hear that some huge corporations are talking about privatizing the water, about privatizing forests, because all those things belong to all of us, but that's just a nice word. Sustainability, it's like candle with two ends. It's a process. Even in the business, if you will think that now you are sustainable, not necessarily. The new knowledge will come. I believe that those people who, who, who were designing those refrigerators with antibacterial cover, they never thought about danger. And we still don't know, maybe it's not danger. We don't know how nanoparticles are behaving in, um, in our cells. It's a process, it's a knowledge. You have to take into account all four issues and it's long-term vision. If you want a profit today, right now, it will be difficult to be sustainable. Because sustainability is about long-term vision. Unfortunately, today, today's economy is short-term economy, and we think about profit here, now. We never think about future. Sustainable business, responsible business, they usually talk about those dimensions of sustainability when we talk about corporate social responsibility. They talk about environmental impacts, impacts on human rights, labor practices and decent work, decent pay, society, product responsibility, and Global Reporting Initiative has about nearly 160 about indicators for business what to do in order to be sustainable, in order to be responsible. There is a number of impacts business is doing and business has to go through all those different aspects and to understand where they have negative impacts, where they have positive impacts, to increase positive and to minimize negatives. Okay? Now it's your turn. Choose the group. You may work in the group. Are there people in the groups? Yeah? yeah? You, you have your group, isn't it? Yeah. Or some not? But please, are you sitting in different places? The same group in different places? Yep. Yeah? Two minutes. Find your group. First group, second group, third group, fourth group, fifth and six, six groups. If you, if there are more, I don't know, are there more, Julia? Find your group in two minutes, and what you'll have to do, select your challenge, you probably have selected already your business idea. Think about what is happening, why it's happening, the problems in your business, brainstorm for ideas, and make a plan how to overcome it. Think about causes, why it's happening. Think about, deep about causes. And try to find solution. Two minutes to find your group. Quickly.
when group is ready, somebody should raise the hand and you will get the paper. Paper is needed here. You are only two. The problem in your business No, the problem, well, the question was, should it be a sustainability problem? It's the problem in your business. And think why it's happening and what impact it has. Think about your idea and impact of your business idea. What impact it will have on society, on environment. If positive, think how to increase it. What good will happen? What goodness you will create? What wealth? welfare you will create. If bad, think how to make it less. If you have questions, ask me. And you have 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I will ask every group just to name your topic and impact and maybe solution, maybe. Thank you. 
Everybody is ready? Still working? You need more time? Five minutes more? Five minutes more because some groups need time.
continue this conversation further from your questions I understood that you really need more background for your business idea you really have to explore it in more different ways you have to you have really to go deeper and deeper and deeper so I would like two groups to present their challenge and the solutions you think you will be finding during your case. Who would like to present? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, two groups. <laughs> we have two groups. <laughs> yes. Please keep silence because we have rather Let's listen. Yep. Uh, okay, so for this diagram that we're creating, it's basically we just identify the common <coughs> challenge that our idea has. And basically our business plan is we're creating a co-op, a co-op farm to provide competition to the big farms for customers. So kind of a peer-to-peer -peer in the farm world. So these small-scale farms sell directly to customers, and customers buy a share in these small-scale farms' crops. So the main, the central challenge that we've identified, that we believe that our idea will face, is going to be the costs associated with this small-scale farming. And now, why is that going to be an issue, or what is the cause of that? And one of the causes is bulk. So for these big farms, you can buy the resources in bulk, you can buy your land in bulk, and you can also buy the crops in bulk. And the more you buy of something, the cheaper the end price is going to be. And then there's also the problem of established customers. So the established customers of the big farms, they're mainly grocery stores or other farms that are buying the, the produce from that. So they have their customers. Meaning the money that they spent maybe years ago in advertisement, they're just gonna, it's just a net profit for them. They can just benefit. Whereas for a small scale, who, who knows of you when you first start out? Maybe your friends, maybe your families. And traditionally, you're not gonna get a whole lot of your, a whole lot of income from them unless you advertise and, and expand your idea to the general public or foreigners or people who, who don't even know about you. And then efficiency is also an issue of these small scale farms. Because now there's kind of two generations who are doing the small scale co-op farms. It's kind of like the hippie, new age, kind of young millennials, but it's also the older people, the, the more traditional people who have done it for years. And the main issue with the efficiency of it is these big companies, they've spent a lot of money into researching the most efficient way to water a crop, when they should plant, 
Whereas these small scale, they kind of either go off like their farmer's almanac or they go off their intuition. So it's not an exact science. And then also the experience. The longer that you have a farm, the more experience you're going to get. And you know, those results are just inquantifiable. You're just, they're just there over time. They build slowly. Whereas maybe for the older farmers, if they've done it for a while, they're kind of set in their ways, so they don't really have a lot of like experimenting with more efficient ways. Whereas if the younger generation, they like the idea, they want to get into it, they're going to have a lot of problem. Maybe their first crops are going to die off. They're going to lose some of that money. Or overall, they're just looking for a way to make sure that they can avoid the pitfalls or, or going into debt for it. So overall, these are the main causes um, of our central problem, which now in the future, we're going to look to solutions for them so that way they don't become a big problem. Okay, thank you. Thank how you. How you will guarantee the quality of your production? The quality? The how quality. Can... So it's, um, we're not producing anything. It's all the farms, so it's the actual farmers who have done it small scale, maybe just to feed like their families, or who have sold at just farmers markets. What we're going to do is we're going to create a co-op for these, so different people who maybe don't go to the, who aren't their family members, or who don't go to the farmers markets, they can buy, it's going to be an online marketplace, so they can buy a share in the small farmers but crops. In, in the farm. How you will guarantee that it's really that they are not using some, I don't know, old pesticides or something? So we mm. like to get a small farm, it's not big ones. Right. Well, so it's still, but still they, they might use, they might not know, they, they might not have the modern knowledge, what does it mean, sustainability? How you will, how you will, because it, well, if, you're talking if about the is small scale local trade. Yes, so yes. that's to minimize the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the way from the producer to the eater, let's say right. to the consumer. Exactly. So, but the quality of the producer. So the reason that the co-op is actually existing is to create a higher quality than what the big farms are producing. And maybe not here in Lithuania, since this is gonna be a new idea, but we have years of experience or there's already years of research in other markets. So in the United States, for example, we have research that, that proves the co-op farms, even though they're coming from many different farms across the country, the crops that they yield are generally higher in nu nutritional value, usually less susceptible to diseases because they use less chemicals. So how are we gonna guarantee that in the Lithuanian market? Think. Well, Think I was about, about to answer. I don't know. <laughs> All right, that's why I'm answering, because yeah, I know. Yeah. So the transparency is, is the issue. These farmers, they're, they're not going to keep you know, how they produce something a secret. And a lot of times, they, do, they don't even have access to these really damaging, like, big-scale chemicals. So if they're going to want to be part of this co-op, if they're going to want to sell their, their crops, then they're going to need to give transparency on, on how they produce it. So we don't, we don't expect that to be an issue. And it mm -hmm. hasn't been in the past okay. for... I hope so. Okay. Let's hope. <laughs> um, because we have some kind of the market exchange well, system, small scale. Mm. And I, I have some doubts about quality. So okay. transparency and ethical behavior of the producers, I think that, that's, um, that's an interesting point. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you for your excellent, okay. excellent idea. Thank you. Up to you. Of course, please. Please come. Right, so we're going to try to make it as short as possible. So we kind of have a lot of problems. We will be facing, I would say, but uh, the main we kind of need to take serious as well as packaging because we, for our business would be uh, even so Yeah, right. it's kind of uh, a similar idea to Thais. Uh, we want to bring the uh, farm food to the people's plate. As you know now, we, we have some struggles with getting really natural food to our plates. We're buying it from supermarkets, which are really uh, kind of not good food we're eating right now and, and having a lot of issues with that. So we're bringing the farm food to the 
customer and we need to package it yeah. properly. So basically we're thinking that uh, if we're um, making these natural products go to our customers, we need a uh, natural, as much, as uh, well, natural packaging as well. So what we're trying to do is just uh, make as ecological as those products were uh, offering uh, <coughs> these packaging as, as well, so that we would not impact pollution. Well, uh, there wouldn't be any uh, impact on pollution. So we kind of faced that our solutions that would be biodegradable plastic bags, reusable thermal boxes, and uh, reusable ice blocks. Meaning that uh, basically, let's say the carrots would be in the plastic uh, bag, which is going to be the biodegradable uh, yeah, plastic bag. And those thermal boxes, uh, they're just made uh, for those uh, products to, to stay precious uh, while on the travel, and the uh, reusable ice blocks are made from uh, like a gel uh, that is frozen, <coughs> and well, you know, after traveling to our customers and everything like that, it keeps yeah keeps the temperature, yeah. and we can just uh, frozen uh, pro well, freeze that once uh, in a while and just reuse that for other. Excellent idea. But me, as a person working for 20 years in sustainability, I once came with that idea to the business, to the uh, packaging industry, and we've said the sustainable packaging is 20% more expensive. So you be ready that you have to educate customers so that they, it's better to eat from the ecological. If you are paying for ecological food, pay or the packaging, because from the packaging you might get a lot of chemicals and so on. Yeah, yeah. I would say like the, the biggest investment would be in that as well, but uh, well, the idea to just for everybody to understand how it's, how it's important, how it is important, and if we will succeed with this, I would say uh, it will bring you more income than just investing in stuff. Yeah. So just like one-time investment, more likely, uh, and if it succeeds, uh, well, it's going to be easier. Sorry, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We have five minutes left, and I still have half an hour lecture, so I will definitely not take your time. I hope that you will explore sustainability issues in your ideas, and you'll go further with the development. And I would like you to end up your futurepreneurs projects as sustainable and responsible business. Just for your knowledge what sustainable and responsible business is, you will get the slides and you may look at the websites I've provided in the slides and explore more about that issue. But corporate social responsibility is about understanding impacts. I put equal sign corporate social responsibility and sustainable business. For me, it's the same because in both concepts, you consider your impact and you think about how to make the planet a better place to live, how to satisfy the customer, uh, how not to do harm for environment. Uh, the concept itself, it develops and we will have something, maybe additional definitions in the nearest future. But today we talk about sustainable company. We talk about company who gains profit, not compromising needs of people, not consumers, not compromising needs of nature. And it's about change once more. Because if you are starting introducing new concept, if you are starting introducing new idea for people, you will get the resistance. Because it's new, people are used. Even if it's bad, people are used. So think about how you will act as change agent. That's very important. And there are a number of instruments. You may have a look at UN Global Compact 10 Principles. You may look at Global Reporting Initiative 200 questions for companies. What does it mean to be responsible? Of course, there are guidelines for multinational corporations produced by OECD. If there are responsible principles of responsible investment. And by the way, 
the businesses who are sustainable, we have more chances to get investment in our days because sustainable, because responsible investment is growing and you may think of even about green bonds for your business, why not? We have first green bonds in Lithuania by Lithuanian Energy. Ten principles. You will read four different categories. Environment, labor, human rights, anti-corruption. We didn't talk about anti-corruption yet, and I think you may think also in your field about that. 20, uh, on 2015, 17 principles. Look how your business is related to the sustainability goals of our days. There is a, a global value toolkit where you, according to your business type, you may look at different questionaries. What does it mean to be sustainable business? And few reality cases. Yes, we do have sustainable business in this world. It's interface, the famous example. The company who operates nearly 20 years, more than 20 years in, in, in the market. It's a global company with millions, with thousands of workers. They produce carpets. They don't sell carpets. What do they sell? They produce carpets from the natural materials. They imitate the nature colors, and they, of course they use natural dyes. They don't sell carpets. And in 2020, they go for zero emissions, zero waste goals. What do they sell? You don't need carpet. You need beauty for your eyes. You need softness for your legs. And you want to change it. So you're getting service of the carpet for two, three, five years. And they collect it as a raw material. That's the future. This is a recent example. It's a small company, it's a small business. This guy from Netherlands, he was trading cocoa, coconuts. And when you, are, uh, when you are transporting them, so you cut this, I don't know, peel? Is it peel, right? On, you, you, crust? Yeah, you, you cut the crust. And they burn it in Sumatra and neighboring islands. And that produces a lot of fume, a lot of pollution, and of course it's decaying rats and so on and so on. Uh, the price of the wooden pellets is very high. The guy decided to produce the pellets for transportation from the coconuts, from the shells of coconuts. And he earns billions. Billions, because they are recyclable, they are biodegradable. And he developed that idea just looking at the problem. So look at the problems in your future life, not only during future preneurs project, but look at the problems we have, find solutions. Uh, there is one interesting example in here in Lefien in Nuzupis. Restaurant Sweet Root. It's the first sustainable restaurant in Lefienia. It, uh, it's among 10 sustainability restaurants in the Scandinavian countries and they produce everything from local food, from local farmers you were talking about. So you have somebody who would be buying your, your production, your idea. Nordic approach, bioeconomy. It's about replacement, upgrading circulation, collaboration. Look for collaborators. If you are working with packaging, look at Lufin and packaging companies. I even can suggest with whom you can talk. I know one company who is, who is looking for ideas about ecolog ecological packaging. It's a local capital company, small company, medium company. And be strong. Fight for your ideas. Talk with your team. Don't keep in your only mind. Don't think narrow. Think widely. Look for information. And you may be business as usual. Of course it works. You may just optimize a little bit. And you may just be transitional business. Completely different business. Selling service. Uh, building trust. 
finding new solutions, not creating problems. Your choice, you choose. And remember that you have to understand the causes of the things. In this picture, it's a cherry tree. It doesn't have waste. Each leaf that falls down, it's a food for somebody else. Create business like a cherry tree, like a blooming cherry tree. And big success for you. Looking forward to listen to your final presentations. Thank you. If you have urgent questions or some comments,